Let's go to amine. Let's have amine or amines. The amine group is NH2. So for the names, we use the suffix amine or amine. So example is ethanamine or ethanamine. So we have here common examples. So the simplest is methylamine. So NH2, uh, from methane, methane, we drop one H and replace it with an NH2. So it becomes methyl, Cl, CH3 becomes an alkyl group and is called methyl. And then amine. When another hydrogen, when one hydrogen is replaced from the amine group, with another methyl, then we will call this methyl amine. When the other hydrogen is replaced with another methyl, then we will call it trimethyl amine. This one has uh, two, met two ethyl rather attached to the amine group. So with one hydrogen remaining, so we call this di diethyl amine. Diethyl amine. The other one is composed of one, two, three, four carbon chain. In the right terminal, you see the amine group, the amino group. So we call this one, two, three, four chain, um, four. So we have butyl, one, two, three, four, butyl, amine, butyl, amine. Amide. Amide group is the C double band O, single band NH2. So double band O is uh, with the oxygen and NH2 is attached to the same carbon, to the same carbon. So both functional groups, carbonyl and amine, attached to the same carbon and is called as one as amide group. So for the name, we just add the suffix amide. Example is ethanamide. This is acetamide. Okay, acetamide has two carbon. So acet means two carbon in common system of naming. Another is, so notice the position of the amide group. It's uh, usually in the terminal, either left or right, normally indicated in the right terminal. So this chain is composed of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and therefore from hydrocarbon hexane, becoming an, an amide, replacing uh, some hydrogens with the amide group. We will call this hexanamide. So this is an open chain structure. This is the closed chain structure of the uh, amide, hexanamide. Next is haloalkanes. Haloalkanes called haloalkanes because alkanes attach with a halogen. Any of the four halogens can be attached to an alkane such as, um, uh, namely, rather, fluorine, bromine, chlorine, and iodine. So we, call, we, we use the prefix halo in naming Haloalkanes. Examples are uh, bromine as a substituent becomes bromo. With no space, you call this structure as bromomethane. If it's chlorine, but uh, there are two chlorine to indicate two, we use prefix di, dichloromethane. Methane because it's uh, one carbon alkane. If we have uh, two uh, halogen atoms attached to a longer chain, but indicating the positions of the halogen as uh, substituents, we have to number the chain. So from, from the left terminal or either terminal 1, 2, 3, uh, we'll give the numbers, the positions of the chlorine uh, atoms, the halogen 1, 3, 1, comma, 3, dash, dichloropropane for 3 carbon chain. Nitriles are uh, characterized with the cyanide group or the nitrile group, C triple band N. So we use nitrile as suffix for the IUPAC names. Okay. We have here two carbon chain and it's called if an alkane, an alkane ethane. So this one replacing some of the hydrogen atoms with nitrogen becomes ethane nitrile. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbon, and therefore hexane, if it's an L alkane, replacing the some hydrogen atoms to with one nitrogen atoms becoming a nitrile. We call this hexane 
because 6 carbon atom, nitril. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon chain, but butane, nitril. But there is a substituent. So this one is called, you, car you, you number the, the carbon chain starting from the terminal that is closer to the functional group nitril. So in this case, 1, carbon 1 is in the left terminal. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the substituent methyl is positioned in carbon 2. So we have 2 dash methyl, no space, butane for a 4 carbon chain in, as the longest chain. And then the functional group nitril. Thiol is characterized. Thiols are characterized by the thiol group SH. And then suffix for the, lad, for the IUPAC name, thiol. Simplest is methane thiol. This one is a third butane thiol because you have one, two, three, four carbon atoms, but the carbon atom where the thiol group is attached is a tertiary carbon. Tertiary carbon because it is bonded with three other carbon atoms and therefore a tertiary carbon atoms. That is where the thiol group is attached and therefore called third butane thiol. More examples are as follows. So we have here one, two. The first example from the left, we have one, two, three, four. And then the other one is a substituent. Yeah, so you, you, you uh, number the carbon chain starting from the, from the terminal where the functional group is closer. So in this case, you number the, the, the chain from the right terminal. So you have one, two, three, four as the longest carbon chain. Thiol is attached to carbon one, automatically carbon one. The methyl group as a substituent is attached to 1, 2, 3. So this one is called 3 dash methyl because it's a one carbon uh, substituent dash 1 butane thiol to indicate the position of the thiol group. Another one is has a double bond. This is also 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon chain, but there is a presence of double bond. So to indicate the presence of double bond, you call this 2 methyl dash 2 indicate the position of the double bond. So it's in carbon 2. So 2 dash butane is the parent chain, but to indicate the functional group 1 thiol. Acyl hal halide, uh, in acyl halides, we have the acyl halide group. C, C double bond O single bond halogen and then we use the suffix oil and then the name we add the name halide example simple example is ethanol chloride so we have here two uh, sample structures one is called ethanol chloride why ethanol because uh, including the carbonyl group here or the acyl halide group we have one two carbon chain so from ethane being a carbohydrocarbon derivative from ethane, we change that to ethanol, and then the function, the halide present is chlorine, and then we call that. Uh, we change the name to chloride, IDE. So we call this ethanol chloride. The other example has one, two, three carbon uh, chain, carbon chain. So three carbon alkane is called propane so from propane we we come up with uh, we derive propanoil propanoil and then another chlorine change uh, the name to ide with suffix ide so this one is called propanoil chloride okay this one is one two three one two three so this is propanoil this one we have uh, this time we have bromine as a halogen as the halogen attached to the carbon group in the in the acyl uh, halides, uh, halide. so this one is called propanoyl bromide. The other one has a substituent attached to carbon two. So from the left terminal, we have one, two, three carbon as the parent chain. As the uh, longest carbon chain, we have two methyl is attached there, and then butanoyl one, two, three, four carbon butane becomes oil butanoil so we have two methyl butanoil and then the acyl halide chloride arenes are aromatic hydrocarbons that contain the benzene ring so some examples are the benzene me methyl benzene so these are the parent uh, chains here are the benzene benzene structure is this with the chemical formula c sub 6 h sub 6 
So notice here the removal of one hydrogen and replacement with a methyl group. So this is methyl benzene. This is ethyl benzene. Two carbon substituent is attached to the benzene. We have two methyl substituent attached to carbon 1 and 4 and therefore called 1, 4 dimethyl benzene. Others are we have nitrobenzene. Uh, the circle here inside the hexagon uh, constitute to the three double bonds inside. So they're just the same. They mean the same. They are benzene. So replacing one hydrogen with nitro group, we call this a ring as nitrobenzene. Replacing with a halogen, you call this chlorobenzene. It may be bromobenzene, iodobenzene. And what's the other one? Uh, bromo, chloro, fluorobenzene. Benzoic acid when one hydrogen is replaced with a carboxyl group, COOH. Benzaldehyde if uh, one uh, carbon atom, uh, hydrogen atom is replaced with a carbonyl group. So this one becomes uh, an aldehyde and is called benzaldehyde. They are categorized as monocyclic, polycyclic and linear fusion, which are more complex and to be tackled in higher chemistry. As a practice, can you name the following? So practice this in your own time, convenient time. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, let's uh, go over uh, isomers. Isomers have something to do with structures of the molecules. These are molecules with the same molecular formula but different arrangement of atoms. Isomers can be categorized as structural or constitutional or stereoisomers. So according to structure, we have skeletal, positional, and functional. According to spatial position, we have configurational and conformational. Under configurational, we have optical and geometric. And then up, up, uh, under optical, we have enantiomers and diastemic. As streamers. We will uh, be encountering more of this as we go to uh, structures of uh, biomolecules, the four groups of uh, organic uh, molecules, the molecules of life, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acid. We have three types of uh, structural isomers. We have chain isomers. So we have here open chain um, uh, structures. Notice the same number of uh, the same molecular formulas that is the same number of carbon and same number of hydrogen. We have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogen carbon. Following the general formula of alkane, we have C sub n H sub 2 times n plus 2. So all in all, the total number of hydrogen must be 2 times 6 is 12 plus 2, 14. Let's see. 2, 4, counting clockwise, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. So the chemical formula of the first structure is C sub 6, H14. Notice the uh, change in the uh, attachments of carbon. So in 3-methyl pentane, 1 carbon from the right or left is changed position. It becomes attached to the middle carbon. But counting the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms, you will have the same molecular formula. Different arrangement of atoms, but same molecular formula. That's how we uh, refer to or regard isomers. So chain isomers, they just differ in the position of carbon atoms. So other examples are as follows. So same molecular formulas but different. They also behave chemically. Differ, uh, they also behave uh, differently. You know, by they, their chemical uh, uh, properties also differ because of their structures. Number two is uh, the position isomer. Another type of structural isomers. Position isomers wherein you uh, uh, have the position of the functional groups in... Uh, differently. So in the first example, in the first structure, we have the chloro, the halogen group attached to a terminal carbon. In the second structure, we have the functional group 
or substituent assigned uh, attached to a non-central carbon atom. I mean central carbon atom, non-terminal carbon atom. So central uh, non-terminal carbon atom in the first example, in the first structure we have chlorine attached to a terminal carbon atom. So they have the same chemical formula, molecular formula, but different arrangement of atoms. So they have different names, one chloropentane and two chloropentane. So they behave chemically differently. They have different chemical behavior. Other examples are as follows. So the OH group, the, the functional group, has uh, different positions in these four position isomers, hence different names. And the last groups, the last group for structural form, uh, isomers are the functional isomers. So according to the position of the functional group, the compound becomes different. So in here, the carbonyl group in car is in carbon 2. Hence, a ketone. In the other structure, the carbonyl is at a terminal carbon, hence becoming an aldehyde. So depending on the position of the functional group, the type of organic compound it becomes. So the different positions of the functional group results to different organic compounds, classes of organic compounds. But counting the numbers of atoms present in the compounds, we will have the same. Because again, isomers have the same molecular formula but different arrangement of atoms. Another examples are propanol and propanone. So notice the different positions of the carbonyl as functional groups in the structures. So that will be all for the first two uh, learning competencies of uh, for the topic organic compounds. But again, this is only an introduction. You can uh, use your references, uh, maximize your uh, resources in order to study further about organic compounds. So that will be all, all for this video. Th thank you for uh, uh, watching. I'll, I'll uh, uh, see you again next time. Thank you.